in the event. So my name is John Connolly. I'm the director of the Institute for Slavic East European and Eurasian Studies at UC Berkeley. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our uh, meeting today, uh, which is a virtual introduction and dis discussion of the book, Breaking the Frame, The New School of Polish Jewish Studies. Uh, and our first uh, speaker today will be Alyssa Wallace, um, uh, who was a poet, translator, and lecturer in the Holocaust, Genocide, and Human Rights Studies program at Boston University's Ella Weasel Center for Jewish Studies. Uh, she has also been a visiting scholar at the Beatrice Bain Research Group uh, and works, among many other things, in the poetry and life of Susanna Gichanka. So Alyssa, would you like to start us off? Thank you. Um, thank you so much to, um, to Professor Connolly, to Jeff Pennington and Zach Kelly, um, to everyone at ICES for this opportunity to discuss um, an important new book, um, Breaking the Frame. Um, what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to say a couple of preliminary things and and some make some brief remarks about my modest contribution to the to the book, um, and then I will um, pass the um, microphone to uh, Konrad Matejaszek first, and then Irena Grudzinska Gross, the two editors of Breaking the Frame, both of them professors um, at the Institute of Slavic Studies at the Polish Academy of Sciences in Warsaw. And then if we're lucky, and um, Professor Grabowski, who is in the back of Beyond in Poland, um, will um, update us on the uh, state of, of history politics in, in Poland. Um, Jan Grabowski paid um, uh, Berkeley a flying visit in um, in uh, February, uh, if memory serves, on the very day Russia invaded Ukraine. Um, so I will leave it to him how how much of um, his piece in in, in breaking the frame um, he wants to um, reiterate for us, and how much he simply wants to give us an update on uh, the state of of his legal. Um, tribulations and the state of um, history policy in Poland. Um, so thank you to all panelists for joining from a broad reach of time zones. And um, I also want to thank the Bain Center for giving me the bounty of the UC libraries over the past eight months. Um, and although Zuzana Ginchanka is not in this book, um, she's a figure who is intimately connected with its subject matter as a Jewish Polish poet. Um, denounced to the Nazis by uh, a Polish woman. Um, so Jan Gross, in his uh, introduction to Breaking the Frame, uh, says that if a student asked him now what language to learn to study, to best study the Holocaust, he would say Polish. Um, and I think it's Jan Gross um, who can fairly be said to have, have started the new school of Polish Jewish studies um, with the um, publication of, of uh, Neighbors um, on the massacre in Yedwabna in, in 2000. So the new school has basically uh, developed in the last 20 years, um, thanks to him. Um, I think it's important to say that although the new school is, um, that we're, as we're discussing it today, is a field of academic research, um, it's also part of a, a larger cultural and intellectual um, effort, um, which includes all of the arts. Um, I think uh, Jan Gross also mentions this in, in his introduction. Um, and there are many practitioners of the new school, scholars who are in, uh, creative uh, practitioners in their own right. Bojana Kef is a fearless poet. Uh, her, her article in Breaking the Frame about Tadeusz Ruzevich um, uh, is is the, the kind of writing about Polish poetry that is extremely rare, um, especially given the, the in, in America, from an outsider's point of view, the canon has been basically created by Czesław Miłosz. And, you know, it is to his credit that we know all these poets. I learned Polish not to study the Holocaust initially, but to read these great poets. Um, so... I find myself teaching the the poets and writers I love and study the language for um, as part of a Holocaust course, which is just a way of saying that there simply is no escape. Um, if you study Polish poetry, you study Polish history, um, which includes the Holocaust, um, though that is a point that has to keep being made. Um, 
So what is attractive to an outsider um, is, is the way Polish culture at its best has its poets listen to its historians and its historians uh, listen to its poets. Um, the poem that Irena um, asked me to translate for this book, Breaking the Frame uh, by Jacek Podsiadło is unthinkable without the work of the New School. And in fact, it, uh, among the many names um, included, incorporated into the fabric of the poem are the names of two important scholars, Joanna Tokarska Bakir, who also contributed an article to Breaking the Frame, and uh, Jacek Leochak. Um, it's lucky for for Pochatwo, who constructed this, you know, 200 plus line poem on the basis of five syllable lines that Tokarska Bakir is exactly five syllables. Um, so this form, this, this poem is an extraordinary phenomenon um, in, in Polish poetry and I think in, in the larger culture. I, I also consider it a major contemporary poem, um, um, although it was extremely difficult to translate well. Um, it's a poem of mourning, um, and uh, literally because it's um, called swoops a swoof, and I translated that as word column, uh, somewhat prosaically. It forms with its short lines a column, a, a kind of funerary column on the page, um, and it has a kind of incantatory sound, uh, so that even if you don't see it, um, it has a kind of vertical quality to it. At the same time, it breaks. Every, almost every ta taboo imaginable in Poland uh, with regard to the Holocaust and Polish culture. Um, it uh, combines, it does this painful thing of combining um, <clears throat> personal memory of, of the place where the poet grew up with the memory of the, the pogrom of 46 in, in Kielce. And the, the poem commemorates Bella Gertner, who was a victim, who, uh, who was a young Jewish girl who survived the Holocaust only to be killed um, in, in 1946, um, right after the war. So it's a poem based on a photograph, which is fading. And in that sense, it's also a poem about the disappearance of the, of the generation of eyewitnesses and the the fact the, the the sense of fragility of this memory as as living witnesses become more and more rare, um, it's a devastating portrait of Polish mothers, um, what Pochadwo calls uh, holy icons that contradict their frames. It's a poem in which there's an image of a Polish mother, um, basically ripping a, a scarf off the head of a Jewish woman as she's taken away as she is de uh, deported. Um, it, it is explicit about the role of Catholic priests in whipping up anti-Semitic uh, anti um, sentiment among uh, the Polish population. And so it, it, is a, it, it is built on the research done by historians like Jan Gross and Jan Grabowski, um, detailing in sort of meticulous micro-historical ways um, the exact um, nature of Polish the way Polish um, locals, ordinary citizens contributed um, to the work of, of the Holocaust that the Germans were um, uh, carrying out uh, un under the Polish occupation. Um, I don't want to talk too long about the poem. I'd rather just read a short excerpt from it um, before I hand over to Konrad. Um, and it's uh, it doesn't lend itself well to excerpt, but I'll just read the first page. Word column. Her photos faded, a shade, shade, shaded, a girl's radiance seeking a focus. Sirius Bella finds just the right rhyme, both for Israel and for Palestine. Won't show her poems to a living soul, but they do enhance my self confidence because having lost parents in Auschwitz, brother in Warsaw, she wanted to live for them and invest her poems with fire where it dies down or where it flames higher. Where life's exchange rate plummets to zero, life itself will set its own worth at naught, a seat left empty, a vain sacrifice. There too, poetry would fetch a good price, ghetto currency, almost insurance. Poor, no doubt, and blind, but the only kind. A poem some boy would give to a girl. Leochuk writes in street biographies that even if there, 
people were hungry, unrelentingly tortured by hunger, that it had in it a hunger for print. Cervantes, Tolstoy, and resurrection, and two Vim's flowers smuggled in somehow from the Aryan side. Hunger for all things, bottomless cravings, gave them sleepless nights. If it was hopeless, maybe it hurt less when you knew a piece of Bialik by heart. Kirman, Shaevich, and Katze Nelson, even there and then, trusted in poems. Sutzkever, Schlengel, like the game Jenga, where I'm bereaving the words of their weight. So I'll leave it there and um, invite Konrad to um, fill us in a little bit about what the, what what frame is being broken in this book and um, and what the New School of Polish Jewish Studies is. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for 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 making this uh, this meeting and this uh, this exchange possible. And also thanks very much, Alisa, for for actually bringing the the verse from uh, Pochadba's poem, which uh, carries the, the notion of a frame being being contradicted or being being broken. Uh, first thing is I'd like to bring this book as a physical object because uh, because that's that's what we're really talking about today. And, uh, and I'm really happy about the way it looks also. I mean, with the, with the cover by, by, by uh, Wojciech Wojewski and, uh, and, and it, it as a as a volume of, of all the of all the text of all the all the, all the input that all the authors put uh, brought in because this book i mean the way i see it it's really a summary it's 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 a form of a summary of a cultural turn that happened around the the the, the field of history of of of, of Polish Jews and in particular the history of the holocaust uh turn that that occurred maybe during the last 15 maybe 20 years and uh, where it comes from, I think, is the realization that Polish culture as such carries mechanisms uh, of ethnic violence, mechanisms that bring that, that make, make ethnic violence violence possible and 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 uh, and cause it um, uh, the realization that Polish culture uh, in itself carries mechanisms of anti-Semitism. Uh, and also, it's a realization that those mechanisms will persist and revive if they are not deconstructed. Uh, so the idea of deconstruction of cultural mechanisms, I think, binds uh, the the approach of, of 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 many of the authors. I mean, from various fields, because uh, uh, there are texts of uh, which are. Which are research papers. There are texts which are uh, literary essays, or, or 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 a poem, or 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 literary texts. Texts which don't really conform to the to the research to the research formula. Uh, but I think this realization that I'm talking about really is is what what is connecting this text together. Uh, also, the idea that this ethnic violence that in a way could persist. Can be prevented in future if it's documented or if, if it's approached, addressed intellectually and emotionally too, and understood. Um, and what I find important about this realization is uh, um, uh, that it um, it consists in finding that where the violence lies, where the violence resides, so to say, it's not the outskirts of the Polish culture. Uh, and not uh, some sort of nationalist uh, or far right margin, but it is actually the very center, which makes violence possible and which uh, um, makes it in a way persist, and uh, which which historically included uh, also uh, mainstream intellectuals, the state, and importantly uh, public institutions such as uh, the Catholic Church. Uh, so this realization also consists in uh, uh, idea that yes, that the, the nationalism as such provides the language of the violence, but the violence is not limited to the to the fringe nationalist and far right circles. Uh, what is and, and nationalism as such is a significant part of the frame from the book's title that is being that is being. Uh, Broken is being is being uh, deconstructed 
by the authors. Uh, mm, uh, and uh, but what is also important, what I also find important about this realization that that binds the authors is the uh, and 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 what makes it, makes it actually harder for them to publish, for, harder for them to 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 uh, for the new school of polyjury studies to emerge and to function was the political use of the history. And um, in particular, uh, which in particular is a, um, is a position uh, that, would, that, would, that, would, that would consist in saying that uh, any sort of social improvement or social, or, or social change in Poland, political change in Poland and the other Eastern uh, and, and Central European countries would uh, would depend on leaving the problematic or difficult histories behind and progressing to some sort of bright future. And it is a bit of paradoxical, but uh, this sort of approach became quite popular uh, with the last uh, decades of the Cold War and particularly also in the in the, in the beginning of the 20th, uh, uh, sorry the, the the last the last decades of the 20th century. And is the idea uh, that dealing too much with the history of anti-Semitic violence, and particularly with the violence perpetrated by uh, Christian Poles, is a sort of obstacle towards 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 a political change for the better. And uh, um, uh, and 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 so to say, all the democratic establishments, all the all the change of the of of, of this. Of this turn, so so the the end of communism and Poland joining the EU uh, would by itself by themselves would bring democratic values that would prevail over over nationalism over 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 anti-Semitism and anti -Semitism, anti -Semitism, violence, um, uh, and that was this the sort of optimism uh, that paradoxically became became an obstacle itself because. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it 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 prevented uh, in-depth studies of of, of testimonies. It, it, it prevented in-depth studies of of, of 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 the of the cultural mechanism of violence or, or cultural mechanism of of, of, of ethnic and, and, and racial exclusion. And uh, and I think this is the last part of the frame that the book book start uh, from the from the book's title, the, pre the frame that the authors are aiming to, to counter is this realization that actually there is work to be done. And, 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 and the, this work is, is very much an emotional work because it, it, it refers to what many of, of, of residents of this part of Europe would, would, consider, would consider important. I, I mean, this, this is something very visible in, in Pochad was poem, this, this gest gesture of, of um, Almost denying his own background, almost denying his own his own familiar uh, sphere, and 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 uh, standing against it. Um, and uh, what was uh, what was in a way also a paradoxical paradoxical reason, a paradoxical frame of of uh, one paradoxical um, like starting point of this book being 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 published was was to make this text. Available to um, because I, I I do really see it as a translation translate the uh, translating project. I see it as a as a as a gesture of allowing all this new scholarship, all this new writing into into the, the into the sphere of, of of English language of to, to, to making it accessible for 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 for, for readers who who don't uh, read Polish, uh, but also to uh, I mean, our, our our kind of early intention was to facilitate uh, publication of texts that would be um, difficult to translate otherwise, to, to 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 translate and to publish otherwise, because of because of how much they deal with with matters, how much do they deal with with the historical substance that uh, uh, is quite often perceived as as uh, to be left behind and to be and to be forgotten. And not to be analyzed and, and and critically assessed. And I think this critical approach is really what 
what consists what what uh, in in the idea of the of the, of the new school of poetry studies, which uh, which I do really perceive as a as a very necessary uh, cultural gesture. Thank you. Um, you your your um, I hope I have time later to ask you to uh, talk a little bit about your own article. Um, in the book, um, uh, because it's a fascinating, especially for Americans, a story of, of the role that American Poles have played in, in shaping a false narrative um, about Polish history. But I'll, uh, I'll invite uh, Irena to speak first and save questions for the end. Uh, yes, I, uh, I would like to develop some of the, uh, some of the kind of, or repeat some of the ideas that, uh, that Conrad said, that is the, Origin of this origin of this book uh, is in the impossibility of publishing some of the essays that uh, we find there uh, in uh, regular uh, academic publications in English because they are uh, not only um, breaking the frame in the uh, in their content but they are also breaking often their frame in the in the form. Uh, that is, they are um, complicated methodologically. They are opinionated, and uh, and they are um, really challenging uh, things that uh, are within our customary cultural uh, um, regular language. Uh, so uh, very often it was in my in my work as of, of, of uh, somehow helping some of the authors to be published, I, we always were meeting some uh, resistance by the reviewers and so on. So just the, this is a very prosaic uh, reason, of course, these texts and the, the are, should have been published anyhow. And the school, this new school is really making a way towards the kind of the, you know, interest of the scholars, but this was this kind of, I think we need to underline this uh, point that Conrad made. I want to say that we are very proud of the fact that the book, the book is, I mean, the cover is by Wojciech Wawinski. Uh, the, the, the cover is linked to, this was prepared originally, it's one of the, uh, one of the drawings that was prepared for the first edition of uh, Jan Gross's Neighbors. So we are really uh, not only having Jan Gross there and also an article at the end, an essay at the end of the book about Jan Gross, but we also kind of having, we are already, even though the new, this, uh, this new school of Polish Jewish studies is something new, it already builds its own history, so to say. <laughs> so uh, also we wanted, what we wanted to do is to be, um, to show that this is, uh, uh, this pertains to all of the, as uh, Alisa said, all, uh, to all kind of aspects of culture that is both visual uh, and, uh, and written uh, and poetry, uh, as uh, and it is very wonderful that we were able to open this volume by Pochadwo's uh, poem and by Arisa's uh, extraordinary essay about it. Uh, but all, all, also the uh, this essay and this po the, especially the poem is very characteristic by the fact that it is based on footnotes. That is, it is based on this uh, work of, of, of historians within the text, but also uh, kind of acknowledging the kind of work that is being done, which is the work that is on the ground. It is kind of a horizontal work. It is in a way, if I may sound very, maybe very simplistic, the, the, these texts in their majority describe the follow-up of something that is a denied ethnic cleansing. And, uh, and therefore it, it is like a sleuthing after uh, the signs of that denial and the presence of the 
consciousness of the ethnic cleansing. The in the on the on on the part of the Polish population, uh, it is kind of a pioneer in on in horizontal horizontal way in a way in various kinds of texts. And here I very shortly will describe the riches that you can find in this book. You have we have altogether seventeen authors. Uh, in uh, e besides the already mentioned poem and the essay about the poem, we have we have uh, text about literature, but before we move to literature, we have a text by Jan Gross, an introduction by Jan Gross, uh, that is uh, talking about the, the, the state of his thinking about, about uh, how this work is going. We have Jan Grabowski, who is going to talk about his text and his situation. And then from that on, then on, we have we go to literature, two parts, literature and culture. Of course, this is an arbitrary division because literature is part of culture, but literature, this this first part deals with texts, literary text. That is this my essay about Czesław Miłosz and his three Holocaust poems. There is already mentioned Bożena Kef uh, uh, work on uh, um Tadeusz Różewicz and his uh, dealing in prose and writing about his uh, about Jewish issues and 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 about and this is quite extraordinary essay also because she writes about the Jewish origin of uh, Tadeusz Różewicz and the consequences of this denial. Then we have the uh, the text by the text uh, about uh, Ida Fink and the reception of her writings. We have a text about Roman Bratny and the uh, by, by one by uh, uh, Calderon Porta, uh, another one by uh, Tomasz Żukowski. We, and uh, we have, uh, and that is this kind of literary part. This literary part is very much, of course, in, immersed in historical research. But then the second part is more, more historical than that. And it starts with a, an extraordinary essay by Helena Datner about the work of her father, the eminent uh, Jewish historian, uh, um, um, Shimon Datner, and by showing his, in a way, accommodation with the Polish majority, with the dominant culture, uh, that he, showing his uh, his you know uh, do, <laughs> denial of his own knowledge uh, forced upon him by historical events very amazing work then we have work uh, of already mentioned work of Conrad to which we will come back but also a work of Anna Zawadzka about uh, the stereotype of Jewish culture and several other essays, uh, including the essay by Joanna Tokarska back here uh, about the post-war killings in Ostrovitz of Jews, of returning Jews, and by Elżbieta Janicka uh, about Jan uh, Gross, the case, the affair of Jan Gross, the reaction to neighbors uh, after uh, 2004 till today. So as you see, we have a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of very original uh, texts, including maybe I should mention the three that I that I did not mention: Catherine Stoll essay about the problems that the German historiography of the Holocaust has in incorporating the research that is done now in Poland uh, without minimizing the German responsibility uh, for, for, for the Holocaust, for the Shoah. Then we have Piotr Forecki about the March 1968 events as a, pro, as a pro, pogrom, very classical text by now. Katarzyna Chmielewska about the methodology of this uh, a Holocaust research uh, uh, 
area, dom the domain which is methodologically so diversified. And in fact, these all these issues that we, all these essays are very methodologically complex. Uh, so this is my recommendation of the book <laughs> as a, a, a kind of a, a sesame, sesame uh, you know, an open yet if you don't read it, but I recommend it. I'm very proud. I'm very proud. And I think we with Conrad, while working about the book, we were getting more and more happy with the book, both as it looked and as it, as it could be read. Thank you. Thank you so much, Irena. Um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, before I ask you also um, a couple of questions about your, your own um, uh, essay, I'll invite uh, Jan to say a couple of words about um, uh, uh, the, the battles now being fought um, on a very basic legal and the level of legal uh, chicanery in Poland and um, the 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 developments, perhaps, um, in in the case that um, that uh, he describes in his piece in Breaking the Frame, and uh, uh, has also talked about publicly um, recently quite a bit. I should hold up. We're particularly grateful that he's made time to join us um, because his new the U.S. edition of the book, which caused so much um, unforeseen troubles in Poland, has now been published in English and. Um, it's a major event in this in this field. So Jan, can I invite you? To... Alisa, thank you very much. And uh, I'm I, I'm losing my contact with the internet from time to time. So I will try to be as uh, prompt as possible. So once again, thank you for for, for agreeing to host me here. Um, <clears throat> now uh, I will say a few words. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, say a few words about the general context, the legal or illegal context within which uh, uh, historians and scholars of the Holocaust have to function, and the context within which uh, our book uh, today presented will have to uh, make its way uh, to its uh, readership. And, and the situation is not pretty, of course. And I remember back in 2015, uh, some of us met at Princeton uh, at a conference devoted to Polish Jewish studies. Studies. And uh, as usually, um, I had uh, some dire warnings to uh, utter. I delivered a short paper entitled Polish Problem with History. Uh, uh, but when you look back, I mean, I, I identified certain things which I hoped would never uh, come to fruition. Unfortunately, they did, and then some. Uh, so in any case, today we are as scholars of the Holocaust under siege, and let's not uh, delude ourselves. Uh, we are confronted with the power of of, uh, let's say, vindictive and powerful Polish state. Uh, for for And for the Polish state, this, what we do, strikes at the core of uh, what Polish nationalists and right-wing nationalists believe in. So, and the, hence the reaction, which is uh, perhaps uh, extraordinarily uh, strong in the case of my book, which Alisa was so kind to have mentioned, A Night Without End, but uh, this strikes this, um, violent, I would say, opposition toward independent uh, scholarship strikes against many other scholars and freezes even more scholars. We will never know how many books have not been written, right? And so uh, to tell you just very quickly, and most of you perhaps know something about it, but the Polish state has now weaponized uh, institutions, uh, institutions of, let's say, uh, memory and narrative control uh, at an unprecedented level, something really um, looking even back at the clumsy efforts of communists in the times past, um, I would say uh, it does not compare. And uh, for one, Polish authorities today want to sell a product which Polish audiences are very eager to buy and to swallow, uh, while the communists were doing something, were trying to throw or push down people's throats, something which they did not want to digest. Hence, once again, the problem. So now uh, we as 
scholars of the Holocaust, some of us to a greater extent, some of us uh, not yet, but uh, it can be anticipated, have to face, um, let's say, um, legal and illegal uh, means deployed by the powerful state and um, uh, by institutions such as the Institute of National Remembrance, like Pilecki Institute, like the recently conquered museums uh, and other places of learning, uh, which have been, as I mentioned, weaponized uh, to, uh, let's say, play their, uh, to, let's say, basically fulfill the mandate given to them by the authorities to, uh, to engage in something that we call the Holocaust distortion, which is basically claiming that uh, Holocaust happened, but our people had nothing to do with it. And if you try to argue, which we do in this volume and in other volumes too, that indeed uh, Polish society was in a way implicated in the German genocidal project, then you are facing the wrath of these institutions and many other uh, institutions uh, richly subsidized by the Polish authorities, uh, and you uh, have to contend with the letter of law. Uh, most of you have heard about the infamous Article 55A uh, of the um, IPN law, uh, which um, which um, stipulated three years in in jail uh, for people um, for suggesting that Polish society or state has been complicit um, in Nazi crimes. Uh, then, of course. Of course, it was, as you know, also decriminalized, but replaced but by a whole array of uh, civil legal threats to scholars. And mind you, also criminal code 133, a notorious paragraph about slandering the good name of the Polish nation is still very much on the books and it's still very much used by, um, by the prosecutor's office. Um, so in, in the case of um, the trial, which I had to face over last Last two years, um, the problems were quite spectacular. I don't have much time left, so very briefly, uh, because uh, I and my co-authors um, of the book, A Night Without End, uh, quickly found out that we were not really the only targets, that the targets of civil litigation were all scholars of the Holocaust working on Polish history, or Holocaust in Poland. and. The threat was very, uh, very um, important, it still is, uh, because in the first instance, uh, the judge declared that there was something called national pride to which each uh, Pole had a right the same way they have a right to their family honor. Now, if you introduce on the legal scene uh, um, nebulous legally undefinable um, expression, terms such as national pride, then all of us are in deep trouble. Hopefully we won on appeal, something which I could not uh, uh, write in, in this book due to, of course, uh, timing. Uh, we won on appeal, but this is not the end of the story as I learned recently because now the authorities, uh, by the way, um, who refer to the book and they might refer to our book as well, um, in most derogatory terms to give you an idea of how violent the hate speech used by the Polish um, members of Polish government is. So let me quote one Mr. Czarnek, the Minister of Education, who described uh, this book as, I quote, anti-Polish Nazi rag, end quote. Uh, so this gives you an idea of the depth of hate language these people use. And uh, so what happens now is uh, in, the, in the saga of this uh, scholarship is simply that uh, the Minister of Justice Justice, uh, certain Mr. Jobro, uh, quite notorious for his attempts to destroy Polish legal system, um, um, uh, wants to have recourse to something called extraordinary complaint. It is a new kind of law which the nationalists ran through the parliament um, a few years back, which basically gives the Minister of uh, Justice right to set aside any legal judgment he wants, he sees fit. So this is not the end of the story. And now finalizing the whole thing, just because my time is nearly out, I would like to say that uh, 
the reason for my huge concern is not only the, um, the legal attack on our profession, trying to, let's say, divide, to tell us which sources are good, Jewish sources less good, Polish sources more good. This happened in court as well. Uh, but the fact that Polish opposition, democratic opposition, is practically at the same wavelength here as uh, the ruling nationalists. If you look outside the invasion of Russia on Ukraine, if you want to find one other area where Polish opposition votes together with the nationalists today, it's so-called dignity file. It's the defense of the good name of the Polish nation. And if our book can convince anyone that a, a normal defense of a good name of a nation is simply to say the truth, and that's the defense of the good name of any nation, not trying to lie, not trying to uh, change it. So basically, we are in, in a very turbulent time. And and uh, we need simply to be uh, to be cautious. We need to be um, uh, simply strong and uh, face these circumstances, knowing that we have six million people uh, that uh, watch, let's say, what we do, and we have certain responsibilities which are uh, ours to take very seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jan. Um, you wrote recently um, about the leaked correspondence between. Um, a uh, right-wing journalist, uh, Bronisław Wildstein, and um, and Poland's uh, prime minister. I wonder if you could um, say a couple of words about that. Sure. Well, the thing is that uh, there is uh, there was a leaked correspond emails which have been hacked from from one of the uh, Polish more, most important members of the uh, of the minister's council. Um, and in these emails, dated back to night to 2018, uh, at the height of uh, of the struggle about the Polish Holocaust law, the Mr. Wildstein um, wrote to his uh, dear friend, Polish Prime Minister, describing uh, people working today, such as myself and some of my colleagues as I quote, the enemies, the real enemies of the nation. Um, and uh, actually a few, two weeks ago, he came back in a, in a TV um, interview in Poland. Uh, he referred this time only to me. And he said that I am not only a falsifier of history and so on and so forth, but also a real and true enemy of the Polish people. So this is the kind of language you can hear now from advisors of Polish Prime Minister minister and also member of Auschwitz Council, if I'm not mistaken, and the Pauline Museum um, Advisory Council. So next time, then when people sit to table with this uh, individual, they might well be aware of uh, words uttered by him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember one of the most um, disgusting phrases that um, that Wildstein uses in one of his emails is the he's urging um, the 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 building the promotion of Polish martyrdom uh, yeah, together with of, Jewish, on, the back of, yeah. on the back of Jewish martyrdom. I mean, it's the most astonishing thing to read. But it's um, being done constantly. It's being done constantly now. If you look at what is being done at Treblinka, I have written a piece in New York Times uh, half a year ago about this. Uh, how you try to smuggle Polish, or in this case, alleged Polish suffering, uh, on the backs of one million or nine hundred thousand uh, dead Jews of Treblinka, then you get the scope of the story. Yes. Thank you uh, so much. Obviously, these are all um, uh, sort of uh, s summaries of, of very large um, subjects, um, and we only have so much time today. I just want to return for a moment to Konrad, and then I'll uh, um, uh, let Irena have the last word. Um, uh, Konrad, your piece in um, in Breaking the Frame paints a picture of, which I think is very relevant now also to this process by which Polish institutions of Jewish memory are being taken over by the state. Um, I wonder if you could talk just briefly about the, the story of the creation of the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum as you as you study it in your in your essay. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, well, the the subject of the text. That I that I uh, that I wrote and is included in the volume, it was a bit of a surprise for me as well, uh, because I what was actually the most surprising was the extent by which uh, history and history writing becomes part of political uh, devices uh, and and the way 
and the way uh, what history as such uh, is politicized. Uh, so the text I the text I wrote about goes back to uh, to late 1970s and early 1980s, and it was really a time when uh, Holocaust historiography, not as such, but but as a as a as a political device, become become utilized for the first time. Uh, it's a story about uh, lobbying efforts uh, by uh, Polish American institutions, and uh, in uh, in particular, I mean the the the, the lobbies in 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 Washington D.C. Uh, in order to uh, influence the definition of the Holocaust. Which was included in the in the in the in the, in the official papers. So uh, the discussion was, in a way, the result of uh, President Carter's um, initiative to uh, build the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, and uh, and 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 also of the discussions initiated by the uh, by the Council. For the construction of the museum, uh, led by by uh, Ali Wiesel, um, it was. Um, I don't really, I don't really feel I have enough time to 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 discuss this story in detail. But sure. what was what was what was surprising for me was the extent on which uh, the American federal institutions were really willing to accommodate uh, uh, the narrative. Of uh, pretty much Polish nationalists who were propagated by people who I was really surprised that they would follow this. So, so, so people who were not nationalists by themselves, but they would consider uh, lobbying for the um, for, for for Polish democracy as um, propagating the narrative uh, of. Uh, some sort of equivalency of 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 of, uh, of suffering or 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 the or the, or the um, well some sort of you know competition of, of, mm -hmm. of suffering between between Poles and Jews and and uh, and I was even more surprised to see uh, that that this sort of uh, this sort of impact was was really successful so so. Uh, um, uh, the Polish national nationalist narrative was not implemented in the museum, uh, but an, a number of gestures were, a number of initiatives initiative were held to, to, um, uh, to, in a way, incorporate this narrative into into official official scholarship, which, right. which, 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 which I I I, I named this non non critical Polish Jewish studies, which, which were. In a way, initiated by by this sort of political gesture to 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 establish, well, at least discursively, uh, some sort of notion of Polish innocence, mm -hmm. which which is which is rather false. There's an important theme uh, running through the collection, it seems to me, which is the the form in which um, historiography and, and real consciousness in Poland of, of the Polish, you know, the complicity in the Holocaust and, and uh, participation in the Holocaust, the obstacles to, to the truth being written about that often take the form of this, you, uh, what, what um, Calderon Puerto writes about in her essay about Ida Fink, the universalization of the Holocaust, the, the attempt you know, has happened, you know, initially at the, at the Auschwitz, Auschwitz Museum to present the Holocaust as something that had nothing in particular to do with Jews. It's very hard. Um, I mean, when I when I teach the subject, it's very hard for American students to believe that the Holocaust was ever discussed in Poland or anywhere else as, as something somehow um, separate from Jewish, um, you know, the Jewish catastrophe. Um, uh, so uh, moving to Irena, since we our time is short, I just wanted to uh, to ask you about your um, the way you write about um, a similar phenomenon, I think, um, or a related phenomenon uh, in uh, in the poetry of Miłosz. That is uh, the the writing about the most painful uh, scenes of the of the ghetto and the and the war, and without without particularizing, without naming Jews. Um, and the sort of general hovering over the word Jew um, 
that that dominated Polish poetry, I think, until very recently, um, and is probably still felt by Polish poets um, when they, you know, put pen to paper. If poets still put pen to paper, um, is there something that that you would like to to add um, on Miłosz in particular, since the essay is so beautiful? Thank you. I just wanted to mention one thing before I, I, I reply to you that I forgot about one author in our in in my enumeration of all the authors. I forgot one uh, text to which by our youngest author, actually, uh, whose name is Jan Borowicz, and it is a very beautiful essay about hunger and the kind of the hunger uh, hunger as it is now seen in relationship to the ghetto and to the to the Jews uh, that uh, that were emaciated and uh, and uh, and the people from uh, from the concentration camps and so on uh, so it's too bad that I forgot about it uh, forgot about this this last essay as far as uh, uh, Miłosz and the poetry about uh, Warsaw, uh, extermin uh, Warsaw Jews. Uh, the, 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 I'm working on uh, Miłosz uh, for very many uh, lo long years. And uh, uh, so this was natural for me to look at his poetry uh, about Second World War, especially that he was in Warsaw. At that time, he went through war, basically, but for the first year, through the entire war in Warsaw. And he is the only poet who wrote about uh, a Warsaw Ghetto insurrection the, in, a, in, a, in a city in which everybody was writing poetry. And some of the poets, and I am now looking, you know, all my friends are looking for me for the poems because people were challenging me that it is impossible that there were no poems written at, in, during the war about that. But the, so far, so far, there are, the, the, we found two poems uh, and both of them do not mention the word Jew. And they are generic, generic about, this is Jerzy Zagórski's psalm, and Milan Białoszewski by Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And, uh, but the only one, the really the only one who wrote about, this is one aspect that I'm analyzing in this poem. And the second thing is that, that there is a, and besides analyzing what is that he's saying, but these poems also cause a lot of resistance and they cause a lot of resistance to today. Mm -hmm. especially two of them that are the most explicit. One is contested because uh, uh, because Miłosz writes about the carousel that is, uh, that is to, you know, the people are enjoying a uh, ride on uh, on the other side of the wall while the ghetto is being burned. And the people and the kind of there's a whole, long contestation of the existence of this uh, of this carousel, though it is uh, documented many times. And the second poem, in the second poem, the poor uh, the Christian is looking at the ghetto. There is an ending which is really incriminating the Christians as uh, helpers of the death. Uh, which is also very much content. The interpretations of this ending of this plan are um, all kind of avoiding, uh, avoiding this identification. So this is all, this is um, again. I do what many authors do in this book. That is that I'm looking at what happened then and looking at what what is now being thought about it and how this uh, this reality is. Uh, appropriated, distorted, uh, or uncovered. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, thank you so much. I think we are, um, we've run out of time. I don't know if there's a, um, a way um, for people watching this to ask questions, but um, if not, I'll just thank you all for, especially for all your work on the book, um, for in inviting me to be part of it. And um, so I will hand back to Professor Connolly. <clears throat> Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, so as I understand it, this, this book is hot off the presses and we can uh, get a hold of it, I guess, via the normal booksellers. Um, yes, correct? yes, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, it has been published by, by Peter Lang uh, uh, in, um, uh, in Germany, uh, but it is available and Good. it's available also uh, as an ebook and uh, in various other forms, whatever, whatever is now the form books appear in. Okay, I'm just seeing a note here. Um, yeah, uh, we, we do actually have a minute or two for, for a question. If anybody from the audience would like to pose one, please just uh, write them in the Q&A button feature. Is that right, Jeffrey? I'm looking in Q&A. Uh, while we wait, um, maybe I'll, I'll um, ask Irena one more question, uh, uh, if there's room for, for it. Um, it, 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 did, it did strike me what you were saying about the, the tone um, of many of the pieces in the anthology uh, is, is a kind of infraction of academic decorum uh, in many ways. Did you consciously, you, you, you talked about it in the framework of not, not finding a, um, a, a way to publish them in, in traditional um, uh, publications. Um, to me, it's one of the most uh, striking things about the work um, of this entire, you know, being done in this entire field that there's a certain acknowledgement that, um, that emotion and knowledge um, cannot be separated, and that um, that only through you know real grief and and anger do you open up a space for for new learning, for new um, for new knowledge. Uh, was that a con sort of conscious uh, choice when you put the book together, or was it simply a question of we can't find somewhere to publish these pieces um, otherwise? Uh -huh. I can reply, I think, in my name and in Conrad's name. We had two or three actually objectives. One objective was to uh, put some of the scholars that are so-called younger scholars uh, who are not well known uh, in the English language. This is why it's so terrible that I forgot about how proud, proud we were of our youngest uh, scholar and I forgot to mention him. Uh, the second, the, the second thing was that we were looking at the uh, the kind of classical. In this, again, this is very short term to have classical text, but but the kind of the most the, the, the texts that were made some kind of steps that are visible in in our research, and we included them. And the third was that we took in those that were difficult to uh, place that were rejected that were rejected, that were rejected uh, by uh, in some publications and the general the, the motivation for the rejections was that this, this is a, not a, an academic article but it's an essay uh, while these texts all of them and they have this is one the, the one thing that is characteristic of all of them is that they are painstakingly documented. Mm -hmm. They are so documented that sometimes they are difficult to read because of that. Uh, as if the authors were defending themselves against, against a possible accusation of telling things that are not true. The work that these authors do is always from the bottom, so to say, from this fact, from the voice of the of the uh, of, of the uh, witness, from the fossils, so to say, discovered, you know, and 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 saved. So 
they cannot, none of them can be accused of uh, not being true. Uh, but uh, very often the people who reviewed them didn't like, the, thought that conclusions were going too far. Mm -hmm. That the author was too, uh, in, too much involved in what they are saying. Uh, so it's not the expression of emotion it's, uh, in the text because none of them does have, uh, uh, do have, none of them shows emotion in this kind of way that we usually understand by showing emotion, but all of them are with empathy. All of them have, a, in a way, they are taking a stand on the side of the victim. And this is their characteristic. Konrad, would you if, like to add something? Yeah, if, if I may add something, um, what I feel is all this field, all this what we call new school of origin studies, it almost establishes a new methodology, which uh, which kind of consists in, well, this interdisciplinary approach that relies on the detail, but also expands what is considered a, a, a historical essay. So uh, I would say that many of, 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 of the approaches or various approaches taken from various specialties uh, uh, that, that our authors represent, they, well, what they have in common is, is looking beyond, also looking beyond into, into what is an emotional reaction shaped and framed by, by, uh, by contact with the, with the testimony, with the, which, which also considered a part of the, part of the methodology, that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think that's uh, what all the authors in a way bring into, into the field. That's, that's how they expand the field. Yes, and I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's obvious that if, if this field aims not only to increase knowledge, but to actually change society in, in the way that Irena suggests in, in, or you both suggest in the editor's preface, um, that emotion has a role to play, and, and especially anger has a role to play in breaking down what is essentially a kind of uh, linguistic frame, uh, a, a frame which is, you know, built deeply into not just academic language in Poland, but um, into the, 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 the way, to, simply the way people talk about these things has to be broken down. And sometimes um, as Professor Grabowski, who we've now lost to the Polish provinces um, has found um, that anger itself can be a pretext for, for attacks, you know, and, and, and bad reception, but at the same time, without it, nothing, nothing seems to change, so. Um, so I congratulate you um, on this work. And Oops, we do have a we do have a question. Oh, we do. It has emerged, so I'll read it. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, all. Thank you for sharing this with us. Uh, I look forward to reading the book. Are there ways that undergraduate students can contribute to the preservation and promotion of Polish Jewish studies in the U.S. and at UC Berkeley? Could you suggest additional texts, books that you would recommend for students interested in these studies? And a logistical question, may we have access to this recording? Uh, I think we can make that possible. That's my answer, uh, or a possible transcript, uh, so that we can see the names of all the authors and speakers and poets mentioned. So, Melissa and panelists, what do you have to say in response? I will leave this to the editors to respond. Uh, Konrad, would you, would you have some response to that? Well, in terms of the authors, I think what we can do is, it, it, I mean, we do have a list of authors available, uh, and and if it comes to other books, I'll have to think more. I, I don't really have my uh, thing on my mind at the moment. We could uh, we could prepare some uh, page or two page uh, for the uh, and send you Professor Connolly and uh, maybe the the I don't know what would be the best way of distributing it. Uh, we could also send a, a, a PDF, I guess, of the book too, uh, yeah, to be to be available uh, to or to the to the class. Very good. Yeah, we could, uh, and and this will this is being recorded, so I believe it will be available to the public uh, mm -hmm. with names of the authors, as this uh, student was requesting. 
I what think about graduates could do worse uh, than simply going through the uh, table of contents in breaking the frame. Um, that would be a, an excellent uh, sort of reading list to begin with, the, the texts that are discussed in that and the authors who contributed to the volume. Um, uh, translators like me can never uh, keep up with all this scholarship, but some of these pieces will be translated in the future. And um, so the work is afoot. <clears throat> yes, and, and also many of the authors uh, that are part of the volume, they also published previously in English and and, and, yeah. and their work, uh, uh, at least in a part, it, it will be available in open access or it, 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 it will be available online or, or, or in print. So, 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 so I think the even even a table of contact can can work as a as a, as a as a reference to to their uh, other texts. What about this this challenge of of, of undergraduates uh, who who want to um, promote po understanding of Polish Jewish studies in the U.S.? Do you have any thoughts on that? Kind of... hey, I I uh, I recommend uh, reading this book, for example, but there are also other books. And uh, uh, and kind of sharing them with uh, other people, uh, with other uh, either colleagues or somehow doing something about it. This is uh, this is a developing story, so to say, even though it uh, it refers to Second World War, but it is so uh, alive uh, and uh, and and is so full of. Uh, uh, turns as you've had with Jan Grabowski. Uh, you know, this is the the the, the war about uh, uh, of memory. The war of memory about all of this is going on. So it's good to follow up what is going on, and also it's going on not only in uh, in Poland but in Eastern Europe, and uh, uh, and uh, and reading reading what is published about it. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, and maybe remaining active on social media, <laughs> about which I know very little. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think the, the main thing is the, the, the source of information um, that you have uh, presented here. And by the way, the, the authors of the articles are available through uh, the UC Berkeley Library. We we have um, a copy of the book and, and the, the library website actually uh, names the, the authors and the titles of, of the contributions. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And perfect. I would... Also Invite uh, all undergraduates to to apply to the Wiesel Center in Boston, where I teach, where is, which is a center for Jewish studies. But the, I can assure you, the Polish Jewish element of those studies is getting completely out of control. Um, if I have anything to do with it, Konrad, sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, oh, I mean, what I also wanted to add is is that if if anyone had any 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 particular questions about the text in the book or or, or related matters. Uh, Please also to contact us directly because because that's that's uh, um, I guess also one of the ways of of of, of building contacts or or like uh, communicating would be would be just uh, just uh, just just direct exchange of of of, of, of information. Good. Um, I think that that might be a good place to hopeful places to stop um, conclude our discussion today. Um, and with that, I want to thank the editors, uh, as well as Alyssa, translator, uh, and uh, also um, uh, enabler of our discussion today for this, this, this event, um, which uh, will be available uh, through the Institute. Um, and I guess with that, I'll wish you all a pleasant rest of your day from where, from where we are in California to wherever you are, uh, which I believe extends from Warsaw to through, through the uh, East Coast. Um, so Edinburgh. Yes, I'm Edinburgh. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Edinburgh. Conrad? Conrad. Yes. Well, wish, wish, you, wish you pleasant weather. We have very pleasant weather right now <laughs> here in Berkeley. Yeah. Okay. Thanks we'll so much. Okay. Thank you. Take care.